Well, hello, everybody. I told you I'd be back. My name is Donna Stinson. This is Can We Talk About It, where we will talk about that elephant in the room. But before I, I begin, I want to give some shout outs. Um, I, I definitely want to thank RJ Watkins and um, the WHPR crew. I definitely want to thank my friend, Henry Tyler, who makes me look good when I'm on the air. Thank you, Henry. Uh, I actually want to give a shout out to my husband, the love of my life, the man you see, you know, I talk about all the time. He is a dear to me. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my brother-in-law, Haji, my sister, Sharon, my daughter, Robin. Her birthday is Wednesday. Hey, Robin, I love you. And uh, my son, Robert. And um, let me see, did I forget anybody? And a friend of mine named Charlotte, get well soon. Now, um, I've been gone for a while, and if some of you guys see me, you see me on um, Renee Faith's show Friday. Uh, we were talking about uh, me coming back, my back in the seat tour. <laughs> and um, I just want to give her a shout out and thank her for um, inviting me to her show. So listen out for her. Uh, she's uh, Renee Faith. She's on 107.3 WVIE. Thank you so much. So uh, as I said Friday that I had a, a gentleman named Quincy Smith that was coming on. Uh, so uh, as you can see, he's not here. So enough of that. So today we're going to talk about character. And not only that, we're going to talk about what else? The police department. So since I've been gone, they, the police have just lost their minds. What is wrong with these folks? Back, back in the wintertime, they had got on some uh, a Caucasian police officer for talking about a young girl. It was, we, we all know it was very, very cold the first of the year. And um, it, he was he was talking talking about her, calling her out her name and so forth and so on. And it just really hurt my heart that this young lady was going through this. And I don't really give too many kudos to the police department, but kudos to James Craig for getting that bum off of the Detroit police department. So uh, I really want to say some other things about the police. Now, the police... I've been reading up on rights and um, suspicion and probable cause and things of that nature. And, you know, I have a, you can go to my Facebook at Donna Stinson at Stinson 63 and check out a bunch of videos on policing the police. And um, there was a, a gentleman, the police, he was sitting in his house and the police just kicked his door in, didn't have a warrant. Didn't actually even tell him why they kicked the door in. Then they had the nerve to try to harass him and intimidate him, but he wasn't having it. Good for you, son. Good for you. Um, the police, like I say, have lost their minds. Now, you know, we pay their taxes. Okay, people say we pay their taxes, but where does the taxes come from? Okay, it comes from our, our um, foreclosed houses. It comes from seized drugs, seized houses. It comes from uh, us paying property taxes on our houses. And the funny thing about that is, you know, the police are here to protect and serve. But as far as I'm concerned, you're murdering, you're pillaging, you're denigrating, you're, you're disgusting. You're just treating people like they're animals. And you have the nerve to have a W-2 form, which allows you to get money back, which means we're paying you and you're paying yourself. What is what is what is going on with this country? Why why are we? It's us. We we're allowing this. We're allowing them to pull us over at any time and harass us and ask us what are you doing? They have no right to pull you over and say what are you doing? If they don't have probable cause, if you don't have a headlight out, if you're not speeding, if you're not bobbing and weaving through traffic, if you're just going down the road, they have no reason to pull you over. And you do not have to share your ID to them if, you, if, if they don't have probable cause. They have no probable cause to detain you if you haven't done anything. There's a lot of Detroit police officers out here that feel like because they have a badge that they can talk to you any kind of way. Now, another thing which is really funny to me is that when the po Detroit Police Department do training, after the 19 weeks of training, they get $1,000 after training. I've never heard of any company or anybody 
Well, they're not a company because the because the taxpayers pay them. So uh, an entity, as far as a corporation doesn't pay them, we do. But they get this money that we have to pay them. Um, not only that, um, they they. Uh, I'm so through with the police department. People, I just cannot tell you how through I am with them. They they turn around. They tell you. First, they try to be nice to you. When you don't see things their way, they will pull you out of your car. They will drag you out of your car. They will break your window to get you out of your car. There's people that, that's, there was a young black man that was in his car and, um, the police was, was trying to tell him to get out of his car, but he had his car running. And as he was telling the police he had his car running, the police yelled, gun. This young man did not even have a gun. He instantly stuck his hands out the window, and he was like, I don't have a gun. There was other police officers around, and he was saying, I don't have a gun. And he still had his gun drawn on this man, on this young man. And I just feel like, you know, these police officers ain't no better than welfare recipients because if it wasn't for us, they wouldn't even get be getting paid. We have the city council. We have all these different forms of government and nobody can calm the police down. Nobody can, can get these people in check. Not even the people that works over them. These people go through training, as I was saying, and then other police department come and recruit them from here. So when they train them, it's eighteen thousand dollars. If I'm, if, yeah, eighteen thousand dollars to train these people. Then another police department can come and pull them out. Now I know they're trying to stop this by saying if you're not in well, with the uh, Detroit Police Department, five years or better, you have to pay this money back, or the people that hire you, they have to pay that money back, and that's all well and good. But what a lot of people do not understand. And uh, I, I actually think it's a systematic thing. But what a lot of people don't understand is we do not have to have all these white police officers in the city of Detroit. Now, for every community, for every, like, just say a district, for every district, there's maybe 100 or less police officers for that district to go into that district. Because there's what... Um, 1.4 million people in, I think is Wayne County. I'm not sure. I think it's Wayne or Macomb County. I think it's Wayne County. But there's 100 or less cops for every, every, every county. And they come in. And if you notice, uh, they're going back to having, basically, I had looked this up, and it's like, it's, it's like 68% white police officers patrolling Detroit. Now, I've said this before, and I'm going to say this again. Young black men, they're not afraid of police officers. They're afraid of white men with guns. And they're afraid of house niggas that work with the police department, like the brothers on the police department. Did I do it good? Did I kick them right, massa? You people need to stop that. You need to cut that out. Every time I turn around, somebody is getting shot, somebody is getting killed, somebody is getting raped. But they're saying that um, the, murder, the murder rate then went down, uh, the murder uh, statistics then went down, the rape statistics then went down. But every day, somebody's getting killed. Uh, every other day, somebody's getting raped. Now, they'll come in, they'll have DCF or whoever these people are come in and take your kids. And then they'll want, and then if they feel like you've done some type of, now this is crazy, listen to this now. They'll have DCS come in and take your kids. If they feel like you have a gun in a house, and sometimes they even plant drugs in your home or in your car. And they will take your house away and say they're seizing it. They're pillagers. They get their money from, like I said, from drugs, uh, seized houses. Uh, this is the big one, writing tickets. So if they don't write tickets, they don't get paid. They be writing some of the most bogus tickets I've ever seen. Now, I just seen this Sunday. The Dearborn police was on the cusp, but actually the other side of Dearborn, which is Detroit, on Hubble and Schaefer, and they were writing out a ticket. People, people, please, 
the Dearborn police, the Detroit police, Macomb police, these people be right here at these cusps of these cities and counties, and they will give you a ticket, and they're not supposed to. But then they'll tell you you have to come to their city county building so they can get the money. So they're out there scavenging for tickets now. So they're like basically like playing on each other now. They're eating, they're eating away at their own system. The police is not here to protect and serve. The police is a gang like the Crips or the Bloods. I'm not saying all of them are. Please believe me. I'm not saying that all of them are. But in my guesstimation, about 60% of them are. And I'm being very generous when I say that. To you police officers out here, especially you white ones, you see young boys in the park playing ball, and you want to go and harass them. Now, we just got like a nice little... Um, Park not too far away from where uh, we live at, and it's real. It's really nice, and I know also know I know that um, our property taxes also goes towards the school, and lottery money is supposed to go towards the school. So, what's the matter with the schools? The police, it seems to me, is the only one that has any right to do whatever they please, even though you're we're paying for them to do this to us. We got all of these government divisions that we don't need. I looked up some stuff, and I just happened to uh, type in, uh, is there such a town without a police department? And there are. When I was on Fox 2 some years ago, I had um, caught some vandals going through a vacant house, and they were taking everything out of it and everything, and uh, what I said was, you know, it takes a village to raise a child like it takes a village to keep the vi village clean. So we got to get rid of the village idiots. So who's causing the most problems in this city? Detroit police officers. I, I, I'm going to tell you a story. There was a, a, a woman that I knew. Her name uh, was Yvonne Collins. Rest in peace, Yvonne. And... Um, she was such a friendly and outgoing type person. So uh, this was before I got was this was be way before I decided to really get down and get um, grounded in the Lord. And she was like, "Well, we're going out, and these police officers is gonna take us out, and we're gonna be in the paddy wagon and blah blah blah." And I'm like, "What?" So they pulled up in a company van. We all went out in the company van. I believe I've said this before, and. The police were drinking. A couple of them was sloppy drunk. One of them, the one that drove, seeing how I was the furthest away from everybody on the east side at the time, could not make it home. So he had to crash on my couch. When he woke up, it was like 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And um, and when he got up, you know, he was like, I can't go in like this because he reeked. Like, he smelled like a distillery. He had been throwing up, so I, I allowed him to uh, take a shower. And um, I just said that to say this. We pay for all that. We pay for them to party in these vans. We pay for them to go out to lunch when they're should, when they, or dinner when they should be on duty. Go to my Facebook, Donna Stinson, at Stinson63 page, and you will see all of these videos where they have now, they have these photographers policing the police. And they had this one where um, this guy was uh, on his bike, and he was driving. He was in New York, I believe. Well, he was in New York, and um, he seen the police parked in a red zone. And, and he was parked crooked and all messed up. So he decided to go in, find out where they was, which they were in the Denny's. And he came there with his camera, and the police was so shocked to see him there. Not only were the two police having dinner, because it was at night, I don't know if it was his girl or a hooker. It looked like a hooker. She had her arms all around him. He was so shocked to see this guy get all up in his face, asking him, why is your truck parked in the red zone uh why are you on duty and you're at the taxpayers expenses you're taking your girl out or whoever the, whoever this chick may have been and we pay for all this there's people there's police officers that don't live in detroit 
and they come in here, they bamboozle people, and then they go back to their neck of the woods. It's like they're double-minded. They have a Dr. Je Dr. Uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde mentality. When they're in their neighborhoods, they're so quick to want to help their neighbors. They're so quick to want to help the people at their stores. But when they're in our neighborhoods, some of these cops, I believe, now I, I'm not sure, and I don't have any strong evidence of this, I believe they be strong arming some of these Chaldeans around here. Because I, I don't know how this conversation went, but I know uh, there's a certain store, and, it's, and these police officers went in there, and um, they was yelling at the owner. He is the owner. I, I know he's the owner. And they went in the back and everything, and they came out. I don't know what he put in his pocket, but then he walked out. But mind you, some of these stores sell loose cigarettes. They do all these illegal activities in there. And I believe that they pay these police officers off. So, I mean, how can we ever clean up our cities when the people that's supposed to protect and serve are just as mean and low down and dirty and they, they, they're just as bad as dope dealers? Now, I know some dope dealers. I know some. And they're good to their community. They, as far as doing picnics, now they're at the same time they're killing their communities. I don't don't think I'm about to give you guys a bunch of praises. They're killing off their communities, but the police, the police is off the hook with it. You can't you can't even say hi to them without them wanting to throw you up against the car, put your hands up, put your hands behind your back, this, that, and the other. What is wrong with y'all? Why are y'all why are y'all acting like this? I'm telling you, I am policing you guys also. Just today, I was coming out of Dearborn. There's two women cops in, a, in one of these little van, vans or whatever you want to call it that they drive. And they're coming out of Dearborn, and I guess they like, why am I following them? Because I can, ladies. Because I can. I, I, I'm going to talk about these people <laughs> some more. When I come back, I'm going to talk about you some more. But um, I just want you folks to know that you pay their tax dollars. Your taxes from your homes pay their tax dollars, pay for them to be on the streets. And then they got the nerve to get an attitude when you say that you pay for them to be here. Like I said, if we wasn't paying them, they would be right down there with some of these poor people that don't have no way to take care of themselves. They'll be right down there with them. Then they moonlight. At places like Target, which I know you've seen the, the police officer, how he bashed this young man upside his head with a baton. Now, they're saying, I was reading that police can actually do this, but isn't that a, a conflict of interest for them to do that? I mean, I'm, I'm just asking, is that a conflict of interest? Because you're protecting and serving, well, excuse me, you're pillaging and raping, and then you're going into department stores and, 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 and doing the same. You go, a lot of these police officers are on drugs because, like I said, uh, seize money, seize drugs, seize houses, all that stuff that pays for, that pays them. So if you got seized drugs, are you selling it so you could get paid or are you selling it and using it? You know, we, we, we don't pay attention to the things around us. And we should. There's a lot, and I'm, and I'm trying to do this, and I'm about to let you people out there know. You will get more done in your community, on your block, if you start forming block clubs. If you go as a unit and talk to these city council people, these district people, uh, actually, we're paying for them also. They're all government officials. We pay for them. They come out of our money. Now, the government is saying when you go to work, if you buy something for your work or if you buy clothes for your work, now you can't get that. They've taken away our uh, tax exemptions. I mean, we better be careful. The next thing you know, they're going to be saying who can work and who can't work. They're going to be telling you when to think and how to think. They want a one world government. They want a new world order. And we're like sheep. We're just following anything that's being said. And if anybody speak up, 
it's out of the norm. It's abnormal. You should just go with the flow. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. I am not the one to go with the flow. I always walk to the beat of my own drum. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I've endured, and I've talked to you guys about this. I've endured open heart surgery, rape, uh, molestation, abuse, and I've talked about all of this stuff on my show. I've just gotten over breast cancer. I thank the Lord that I'm over that. And it's up to us. No matter what we go through, it's up to us to say what's right and what's wrong. And the things that the police are doing are wrong. They're talking about, we solved the murder. No, they didn't. We did. Our communities do that. Like the 300. Hello, Mr. Malik Shabazz. People, we need to understand that they don't run us. We are supposed to run them. Until we get off the crack, get off the drinks, get off the weed, the weed, until we get off all of this stuff, until we learn that our voice matters because higher-ups or the powers that be or whoever it may be, they'll tell you, you know, you don't have a voice. How you don't pay a, uh, how you don't have a voice, you have a house, you pay taxes, but you can't speak up. Shame on you for not speaking up. So, you know, I got a few minutes left, and I, I definitely, I definitely want to talk about character. We all need, even me, we all need to show better character. We all need, even if you don't have a job, we all need to be more professional with one another. We all need to, if you have a problem with somebody or they've hurt you or they've wronged you, we should be able to go to them and say, well, what's the matter? You know, why, 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 uh, why do you have a problem with me? Why, why aren't you talking to me? You know, we should be able to do that. But there are some people you just can't talk to. There are some people, like I said, double-minded, that they're one way in one circumstance or one environment, and then they're another way in another environment. You don't have to show me but once, and I'm working on that on the second time, giving you a second chance. But you don't have to show me but one time who you are. And then you could just stay away from me. I have zero tolerance for foolishness. I have zero tolerance for liars. And I have zero tolerance for people who last minute me or put other folks over me. I have no time for that. And there are people out here that will do that. You know, they'll be like, oh, you know, uh, we're going to get together. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. But when something or somebody better come along, they want to last minute you and tell you, oh, I can't make it. And it's just amazing how... <laughs> some of these excuses that people make to us is just so oh I can't do this because my boss I can't do this because of that I can't do this because of this when you get around these double talking double minded people and 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 they run this this crap on you you just tell them okay or don't even respond we need to grow up there is children I've talked to 12 and 13 year olds and children ain't my thing, but I'm getting out of that uh, allergic thing because I'm learning that children 12, 13, 14 years old are more mature than grownups between the ages of 40 and 50. Some of them could be your children and you can be the dummy I'm talking about. Until we get into politics, until we learn about the districts. Now, I'm in District 7, and that's where Gabe Leland is. I have a weed head or a weed seller or whatever he is. You know, I, I, I read that he was selling weed when he was in college. I read that. Uh, and then it, it's been on the news about the things he's been doing and everything. Why are we not holding these people at the same level of accountability that the police and the courts hold people that do things? When you see now, like, young black men, even poor white men, all my brothers and sisters, when they go to jail for drugs, they put a label on them for the rest of their life that make it hard for them to get a job, which causes them to, to get frustrated, frustrated, and put them right back out into the same situation that they were in. If you label these people, why won't you label city council? Why won't you label some of these police officers that then got so high or they're 
so in love like Gabby. He had he had something going on where he was messing around with one of the uh, lady officers there. She actually went on Twitter and put a gun in her mouth. A psychiatrist talked to her for like 45 minutes and said she was good to go, gave her her firearm back, and she's out here right now. There's police officers like back when Motor City first got here who took his pension and blew it, and I think he was a de deputy sheriff, and blew it in Motor City Casino in the VIP room, and then after that he blew his head off. We need to get psychiatrists to, to, to uh, assess these folks. And after they assess them, we should have a council of regular people to go in and talk to these folks that's about to patrol our neighborhoods and our areas, areas and find out if they are capable and mentally capable enough to take care of what they're paid to do. Because we're paying them, so we should be able to assess these people, shouldn't we? Shouldn't we? If you don't have character, if you don't have moral character, if, like I said before, when you meet somebody, you're meeting their representative. You're not meeting the real them. Because it takes time to get to know somebody. So don't, don't take people at face value. I found that out the hard way. But don't take people at face value. You know, if you got to tell a person, you promise, you promise you're going to do it, right there is telling you these people don't have, don't have a good, good moral character. They don't have good moral standards. Because if you have to make them promise and you can't just go by their word, then don't ask them to do anything for you. And that's just the way it is. So... My name is Donna Stinson. I'm so glad to be back. I'm going to be here from now every third Monday from 3 to 3.30. I love you guys so much. I'm going to be bringing more things to you. And until next time, stay strong. Stay strong.